I had to go back. But that was the first satellite in space. This started the whole American space race, right? We got to put a man on the moon now because we can't let the Soviets uh, outclass us in, in space technology. Let me go back here real quick. Oh, I guess it's not going to let me go back. That's okay. All right. Another very important topic that is still very relevant to today in 2020 as well is the military industrial complex, which Eisenhower is really the first guy to warn the American public of that happening. All right. And so basically he warns that the military industrial complex, which would employ millions of Americans and having a financial stake in war making, could become a threat to peace. So to simplify that, basically what he was saying is that these people and companies and manufacturers, industrialists, whoever, make a lot of money off war. I know you've heard me discuss this before, that war generates a lot of money, especially if you are the winner, only if you're the winner, really. So if you can win wars, you can make a lot of money. It'll stimulate your economy, uh, and obviously you get money from whoever you defeated, so it's, it's very profitable. And basically he's warning against the fact that these people might gain so much power in American society, American politics, that they will keep pushing for us to go to war so that they can then make billions of dollars, you know, whether you're an arms, an arms manufacturer and creating weapons and guns and selling those to the government or tanks or planes, whatever, that these people will infil infiltrate American politics and positions of power and constantly push America into going into war, which, as we know, we've basically been a part of war and been in wars and conflicts since World War II. We've never really had a break. So we're going on almost 100 years. We're about 80 years now of constant military conflict. Okay, so that's something to think about. Do you think this military industrial complex is real? Uh, do you think it's just a conspiracy? Uh, that's really up for you to decide. And then go ahead and research that on your own if you want. But I think that's a very interesting topic. And especially interesting since one of the most famous American presidents of all time uh, but seemed to believe that this was a very real thing that was going to happen. Therefore, propaganda is vastly more important in democratic societies. So here we have a video. Physical appearance counts for nothing. Um, this is just how to identify a communist. We we'll take go ahead and watch this real quick. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. If a person supports organizations which reflect communist teachings, or organizations labeled communist by the Department of Justice, she may be a communist. If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. By the early 1950s,
So I'll stop the video there. Um, obviously, you guys don't have to do this exit ticket, but I'll just explain a little bit more on what we saw on the last slide. So again, it was this this paranoia that communists could be hidden anywhere, right? It wasn't always going to be so obvious as someone yelling in the street, uh, you know, and, and talking about pro-communist things or distributing pro-communist literature. It was this this hysteria and and parent. It was all paranoia that you know it could be your next door neighbor. It could be your school teacher. It could be your favorite athlete. It could be your parent, a family member, right? They could all secretly be communist and conspiring against the United States government and the American people, right? And it would be the death of us all. Um, so again, that ties back in with our, our first political cartoon there. You know, how do we respond to that hysteria and that paranoia? What can the government do when we experience times of hysteria and paranoia, such as right now, with the coronavirus. Okay, so um, it's just important to be aware of, and it's it's always interesting to, to pay attention to not only what people are doing, but what the government is doing during times like that. Okay, and so uh, I urge you now to definitely you know follow the news and what's going on with this pandemic and how different states are reacting to this pandemic. Okay, so like here in Ohio, we're on lockdown for another month, right? OK, and so that's we have a lot of angry people about that. We have you know thousands of people meeting at the Ohio courthouse protesting this lockdown with their assault rifles out and, 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 and claiming that this is infringing on our rights as American citizens. OK, but then you have people that agree with it. Uh, then you have states like Florida who are already beginning to open up restaurants, open their beaches. OK, states in the south are, are already getting back to normal. And so it's just interesting to pay attention to uh, and the differences and what goes on between different states during times like paranoia and hysteria, whether it's a deadly virus or whether it's the fear of communism. So with that, I will leave with that. Uh, with that, I'll leave you guys um, just some things to think about. Uh, again, I hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, practicing social distancing, avoiding large groups, wearing your masks, okay, so that we can get back to normal as soon as possible and so that we can see you guys in the classroom in the fall. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me about packets or anything else, please feel free to email me, okay, akettler at zenithacademy.org. Um, I also have my Instagram account, which many of you probably already follow, but I think it's Mr. Kettler underscore two. Let me double check that for you. Where you can you can DM me on there with any questions. I've already had several students do this. Um, this is actually the main way students have been communicating with me. Okay, yeah. So it's Mr. Kettler underscore two. So if you give that account a follow, you can send me a message, and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. But email would probably be a faster way if you want a quicker response. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in, and hopefully we'll get to see you guys soon. Bye.